Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, February 8th, 2012. I'm your host, Peter Bush, in the Phoenix Monitor. Today, we're catching up with our old friend, Bruce Swigo, the CEO of the International Swimming Hall of Fame. They have some new videos in their already incredible archives, so we're going to do a series of shows to highlight a handful of them. And Bruce joins us right now in the Phoenix Monitor from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hey, Bruce, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? Hey, good to be back, Peter. All right, let's talk about the Tomb of the Diver. What's that all about? Well, you know, swimming is, uh, you know, to, to look at swimming as a sport rather than a cultural force in our history is, is kind of something that we're interested in here in the Hall of Fame. Swimming's not just about the Olympics, but it's influenced our culture and world history in ways that I think a lot of people can't imagine. And when I was in uh, Italy for the World Championships in 2009, I had a chance to see the oldest image and representation of an aquatic athlete in Greek art, which dates back to, uh, gee, I think it's uh, 500 BC. And this was the painting of the Tomb of the Diver in a city called uh, Pastum today, but in the olden days when it was a Greek colony in Italy, which is about 85 kilometers south of Naples. It was known as Poseidonia, which was named after the god Poseidon, the god of the sea. And uh, not only did I find some incredible old swimming pools in this town, but I really went to see the Tomb of the Diver. And the Tomb of the Diver is an artwork that's on a four-sided uh, tomb of limestone slabs. And the roof of it is the one that contains this really incredible painting. About 85 kilometers southeast of Naples, in the province of Salerno, Italy, lies Pastum, a seaside resort with beautiful sand beaches. A short distance to the north of this modern city lies the Pastum archaeological site, ruins of a major Greco-Roman city that dates to the 7th century BC. Originally known as Poseidonia, after the Greek god of the sea, this ancient town had a large public bathhouse, the ruins of which can be seen here and at least two spectacular swimming pools. Here's the great pool with the Pastium ruins. It's 50 meters long by 20 meters wide, and it goes from the shallow at the far end to a depth of about 8 to 10 feet here. And what is really amazing about this is this whole area here is a labyrinth for underwater swimming in the deep end of the pool. Come around and hang up on the side of the pool. I'm standing in what's believed to be a private residence in the Pastium Ruins in Pastium, Italy. And what's amazing about this pool, if it was a private house, the pool must have been owned by a swimming enthusiast because the pool measures 10 meters wide by 25 meters long and it ranges in depth from 4 feet to about 10 and a half feet. It was fed fresh water by the aqueducts through these ports at the shallow end and there was a large drain at the center of the deep end. It's not hard to imagine the luxury of swimming in this pool two millennia ago. But Pastum is best known for its archaeological museum and the collection of tomb paintings, with many dating to the time when Poseidonia was a Greek colony. The most famous painting in Pastum is from the Tomb of the Diver, named after the enigmatic scene depicted on the covering slab of a young man diving into a stream of water. The grave was made of five limestone slabs forming the four lateral walls and the roof, the floor being excavated in the natural rock ground. All five slabs forming the monument were painted on the interior sides using a true fresco technique. The paintings on the four walls depict a symposium scene, while the cover slab shows the famous scene that gives the tomb its name. The diving scene is thought to be symbolic of the diver's passage into the afterlife. He is shown diving from a cliff over a wall of 24 bricks representing the hours in the day, and passing through the water into the next world, as represented by the live olive tree on the left side of the painting. But you don't have to travel to Pastum to see the oldest representation of a swimmer or diver in Greek art. You can see a replica of it here in our museum, along with other priceless works of aquatic art collected from around the world. The history of swimming is more than just you know what we've seen in Olympic pools. Yeah, and it, there's so many tourist sites around the world. I've been to a lot of them. I've been to the oldest pool in China, and to go down to this town and see the swimming pools and geez, they, these things—you can just use your imagination to see how remarkable 
these pools were. And, uh, you know, when you go on a vacation, go somewhere to find something interesting. And there's certainly a lot of places to see related to the history of swimming around the world that can just blow you away. Well, Bruce, thank you very much for uh, sharing a piece of swimming history with us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. That's Bruce Wigo joining us in the Phoenix Monitor today. And that is it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.